Here we are at the June show for the OVMS, and we're at a facility called the Roberts Center out in Wilmington, Ohio. It's way out in the country here, about 50 miles uh, south of, um, of um, what the heck is the name of the town? <laughs> Columbus. Columbus. 50, we're about 50 miles south of Columbus and 50 miles north of Cincinnati. Um, it's really a nice area. It's easy to get to right down Highway 71, which comes off of 70. Uh, they have a wonderful facility here with a, a real fine Holiday Inn that's attached to the convention center. So you really don't even have to go outside if it's bad weather. Uh, the only problem is getting here, you really can't fly here unless you rent a car first because it's be too far to take a cab ride. But it's a great place. They have about 600 tables. The show is growing. And OVMS has, I believe, three shows a year here. Uh, it's also known as a good place to buy because it has a reputation as a dealer show. So if you come as a collector, you'll get the same price as the dealers do and there's always lots of material. So we'll take you inside and we'll talk to a few dealers, show you around the convention center, and I think you'll enjoy it. And I think you're from uh, Louisville, I aren't you, from Louisville yeah. all my life. I think Louisville, we know yeah. you uh, 30 years right. at least. I call Louisville the New York City of Kentucky. Uh, and, and you're yeah, right, it is. Absolutely. I love Louisville. I don't even talk like a hillbilly hardly. No, you don't. Not at all. You've got some great restaurants there, too. Oh, my God. Wonderful. Boy, you're not dead, man. It's unbelievable. I'm opening my new ones every week. You've been primarily a uh, gun dealer, but you do handle uh, military also, right? Sure, I've had we edge weapons probably since about when we met around 82 yeah. at the drawbridge when I met, when we, yeah. we rolled in. The good old days. I see you got a few daggers here, and uh, and I also see you got a K-98 rifle here. Uh -huh. Well, that's really just a... Uh, what is this? It's called a, a, a Czech mountain carbine. Yeah? This, it looks uh, a little shorter than uh -huh, the K-98. Exactly right. And you see how this is reinforced? Yeah. Metal? yeah. They would actually use this uh -huh. as a crutch going up the hill. That's why it's... Oh, that's, very interesting. That's why it's a reinforcement of it. And, uh, and this um, insignia here, is uh, that significant of a, of a Czech piece? Or? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a Czech rampant lion. Oh, right. oh, yeah, I see him standing up, yeah. Now, the Nazis had the same rifle. It was called a 3340, and it was uh -huh. exactly like this. The only variation was the, was the front sight. Other than that, it was exactly the same. And, of course, the crest wasn't here. But, uh, yeah, they're beautiful little 8 millimeter carbines. What's a rifle like that worth these days? This is uh, worth about $1,100. $1,100? Uh -huh. So it would be worth more than, say, a regular K-98? Well, a K-98 matching in good condition actually will bring probably around $1,500. Oh, so then it, they're It has to be roughly. totally matching, huh? uh -huh. even though it's rare. The condition, like we know, means everything. Oh, yeah. Now, I noticed that the wood doesn't seem to have a finish on it. Is that the way right. they were made, or is that...? No, actually, it's somebody took, and it looks like, actually, like they used uh, acetone or something, because they've taken, you see how dry it looks? Yeah. And actually, I'm going to, uh, I have a giant buffer, and this is a friend of mine. I'm going to take it home this weekend and do it, redo it for him. And huh? by the time it, it gets through, it'll look similar to this. I see. Yeah, I this looks more natural. I use brown shoe polish and a buffer, believe it or not, and, and it puts it, it puts the uh, well the wood's, moisture wood's back a in little it. porous, so exactly. it, yeah. But it'll look yeah. a lot better. It'll look yeah. dark, darker brown, similar to the jet brown. Yeah. How is the uh, how is the firearm market these days? Still good, is it? Luger's it's really good? excellent. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. People are still. Uh, uh, I've really noticed no difference in the, in the little gun shows I go to every week and big gun shows. Right. People are still a buying collectibles, whether it's edge weapons or, or military rifles. Oh, that's uh, great to hear. So yeah, it is. I mean, as far as uh, 
It's a, it's it's a hard healthy to believe healthy. with the economy, absolutely. In spite of the economy. It's the smartest exactly. thing I ever did. Exactly. I got my first army from my uncle when I was 11. And actually, I got my first P-38 when I was 11. I've been collected ever since. Wow. Well, yeah. well, now you're about 42, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah going <laughs> on 61 next month. Yeah, I hear you. Hard to believe. Well, it's been a good run, Jack. It Thanks sure a lot has. for talking to us. Certainly. I wish you good luck at the food. Too. You're the man. Uh, you're the man. Well, we're coming down the aisles here at the Roberts Center. And we've run into longtime dealer Danny Liptak, Transit Valley Military. Isn't that what it is, Dan? That's Dan. right. Don't you also you have a uh, catalog, I believe? Yeah. You're one of the few people that still do that. Yeah, I put a print catalog out about a couple times a year, and it's one of the few left because I haven't quite uh, done the internet thing. Well, you'll get to it, but the yeah. catalog works good for yeah, you, though, doesn't it? There's still people out there that want to oh. hold things in their hands. So work, work I enjoy well. looking at it all the time, and I try to buy something, but every time I call, it's sold already. Yeah, well, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> you got some neat stuff always. Uh, maybe just looking here, these uh, this set of uh, Mother's Crosses. Tell us about them. They're they're really kind of neat. Yeah, it's kind of neat. The, the basic, but you've got the bronze, the silver, and gold, and basically it was uh, based on how many children you had for the fatherland. Yes. But this is you know for just over two hundred dollars. Or pretty nice thing. Well what's it? What's this little tiny one? That's here? the miniature one that would probably have been worn on a like an address occasion. Yeah. Like a little brooch kind yeah, of exactly. thing or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a, how do you think a set like that, I mean, was that put together by somebody? I think, think it was, because it, it, with this fairly new frame, it was probably done in the last 20 years and probably put together by a collector who wanted to have the bronze, silver, and gold. And they just clipped off the ribbons because they're usually longer, Yeah, right? there'd be, you'd have to have a big frame if you wanted to. Yeah. That's a nice thing. Yeah. That's, a, that's a pretty good price, I would say. Yeah, think. so it, it proves that you don't have to spend thousands of dollars for some nice German things once in a while. And it's the kind of thing for entry-level guys, too, that are yeah. just getting started. I mean, it's got everything and they're, you want. They're beautiful. They're well-made. They're, they're enamel. Small. And they even have a facsimile signature of the Fuhrer on the back. Yeah, right, exactly. So you got everything for very little money. It's a good place to start. Exactly. Well, how do you do at this show, Dan? Uh, so far, I've done mostly dealer business. But yeah. as a rule, this show, I like the location. I do too. Uh, the hall is nice. Uh, and uh, there's not a lot of people that come through the door, but the people that do come through are people like it, reflectors, dealers, and uh, yeah. we tend to buy things. So it's, it's it really, you'd it, have to categorize it as kind of a dealer show. Exactly. But hey, collectors are welcome too. No, right? you're right. Their, their money spends just as well. You're right. So. But it's uh, all in all, it's a. How long have you been doing this, Dan? Uh, I'm 51, and I started when I was 14, so I believe that's 34, 35 years. That's enough time to know what you're doing by now. Well, I, I try to you know, make a few mistakes, but I do the best I can. Uh, thanks very much for talking to us. Well, anytime. I appreciate it. We appreciate knowing you all these years, and you're a good Mac supporter, yep, too. Yep, I've been so. there every one and plan to keep doing them. We and, really uh, appreciate it. Keep, keep up the good work in the show, guys. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah. Bye now. Well, yep. well, collectors, we've been walking around the show here at the OVMS, and buried back in the corner is a really interesting display of things for sale here. And an interesting fellow that's operating the booth. This is Spencer Victory. I know Spencer now for a few years. Yeah, he's yeah, one yeah. of the young guys that just started in the hobby, and he's doing a great job and a great Mac show proponent too. But it looks like you got a lot of pole tops here. Yeah, Spencer. indeed. I, these these all came out of an old collection recently. Um, you know, some of them range from you know paramilitary organizations to military organizations to veterans association to. Yeah, there's, so, there's some of everything. Here. I mean, even one here, I guess this one is for, you know, when France was conquered, this was a pole top they had made up for a veterans association for that. Wow. Hitler Youth, you know, third or second pattern, NSDAP. I mean, just some real fascinating pole tops that you don't normally see anymore on the market because, you know, stuff is... I've never seen budget. this one before. Yeah, it's some an type N of an NSKK N driver because it's, it's basically based off the, the driver sleeve pad, you know, you see. Oh, yeah, So it's yeah. some type of driver's pad. But no yeah. banner over the eagle, nope, though. No, not at all. And the normal yeah. NSKK you see is, you know, the eagle with the right. NSKK right. over it. So it's kind right. of an oddity for a, for a car pad, for sure. Oh, I'm sure um, it would be interesting. But one, of, one of the more rare ones here, you know, that is the, the, is the RLB. You don't ever see any of them at all. You know, it's they're kind of that's kind of an oddity. It's in, in really beautiful condition too. 
Yeah, and, it, and most of the time when you see pole tops and what I've seen over the years is you're going to find NSDAPs, labor right. cores, NSBOs, that's what I mostly found, but these are just such a, just an oddity. A real variety. Here. Yeah. And there has been more, but a lot of them have sold because they've been priced very reasonably and collectors and some dealers have been really sucking them up and really enjoying it. So. Am I right in, in stating that uh, most of these organizations will have a standard in their office and, and use the pole top one? Correct, yeah, the pole top would be on top of that. And then for parades, they, exactly. yeah. And you don't see much of the stuff. A lot of it, I guess, you hear about it's in Russia or wherever, you don't ever right. see much of it in the States because of... Uh, no, you don't. I, it got I, burned up or destroyed, so... I think it's a great idea the way that you've got all these pegs here. To ma that's the way to display right, it, isn't yeah, it? Right, yeah, exactly. It really works out nice. And I, we bought this collection, you know, about 24 to 48 hours ago and got to the show as soon as we could. And, that and, was kind and, of you, a, and you sold quite a bit of it already. Right, yeah, we've done well. If things are priced properly, they will go well. And what yeah. also is unique, we have pieces here that we don't really know. I mean, yeah. some people say they're part of a Jingling Jolly or, you know, a Shalombaum. Um, or maybe just the cylindrical shaped uh, exactly, pole top right. uh, fixture is going. But and, and these, our guess, your guess is as good as ours. And, yeah. Um, this was an interesting one. I, it took a, a buddy of mine, uh, John Talzmanich in German War Booty. He I know, me, I know, John. Yeah, nice he helped man. me with this one. He, I thought it was Tino at first, but he yeah. corrected me. It's for. Um, Wounded factory workers in wartime, I guess. Wow. <laughs> so, wow, something for everything. Exactly, but one unique piece here I feel that stands out is Hitler Youth the Standard Bearers Pole Top. You don't yeah. ever see. What these is this period. one selling for? Uh, um, I'm asking 2300 for it. Wow. And that's actually, you know, a thousand and below my competition, so for sure. So that's you know. a, that's a rare pole top. It, yeah, it is something yeah. you just don't see too often. Because so. most of them are three, four, five hundred dollars, aren't they, for the most part? Yeah, most of these have been below that or around there, but you get yeah. some that are in the thousands, and then if you get into Army standard bearers, you know, you're two, yeah. three thousand or whatever. Well, thank goodness that you know enough to uh, make the money well, on the ones that are worth it. It's money, taken. You know? It took a little bit of research. I find this one, you know, I guess from what I've been told, you know, this is from, you know, I guess when they conquered France and whatever, this was a pole top that was made. It's made out of plastic. It's all celluloid or a plastic really, yeah. material. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's real lightweight. Yeah, it's a very, and, and most of the time yeah. I've been told if you find those are cracked or damaged, and this one's been completely yeah. undamaged. So. Well, there we go, collectors. There's something that uh, I've never seen. Spencer's never seen it. And a lot of these that don't sell here will be listed at victorymilitaria.com. <laughs> there we go. And <laughs> we'll, we'll, put, we'll put your website up, cool. too. Thanks, Thank man. you very much. No problem, guys. Thank Pleasure you for stopping by. Yes, sir. Coming by. Very good. That's good. You don't need anything else, guys.